Josh Frydenberg, welcome. Good morning, Chris. $7 billion surplus which will, won't be inked into the books, in fact, until September next year. Why, why should we believe that figure will actually happen? Well, this is a very credible number and it's a significant number. And obviously, $7 billion in 2019-2020, but $45 billion over the next four years. And we're eliminating Commonwealth debt by 2030. Our trajectory to this point has been a steady reduction in the deficits since we came to government and now a $7 billion surplus. Yeah, but there are threats on the horizon. And don't you risk the possibility of being like Wayne Swan, promising something that won't be delivered? Well, Wayne Swan, Swain Swan totally had no credibility in this regard because he was expecting a $48 billion turnaround in one year, uh, 3% of GDP. He had missed previous budget forecasts by $80 billion. Uh, what we have done is we've under-promised and over-delivered, including in, in the last uh, budget we actually improved our bottom line by over $19 billion compared to what was predicted. Now your big promise is of course on tax cuts, but won't Labor just see you and raise you come Thursday night? Well, we haven't heard from them that they will support the reduction in the 32.5 cent to 30 cent uh, tax bracket. That's very significant. That flattens out and simplifies our tax system. 70% of taxpayers under our plan will be paying uh, no more more than 30 cents in the dollar. That's a very Again, that one's a long way off though. Well, it's part of the structural reform that this budget uh, outlines together with the immediate support in 13 weeks time uh, to families, uh, to people who are earning under $126,000. Now the energy payment of $75 to people wasn't going to go to people on New Start. You've changed your mind on that? It is going to people on New Start and it is in important to help alleviate the cost of living pressures that people are finding. New Start is different to the age pension or to the disability support pension in the sense that many people, most people, leave New Start within 12 months. It is currently indexed uh, twice a year, uh, but obviously what we're focusing on is getting people into jobs and we've got a good record of doing that with over 1.2 million new jobs being created and we've committed to 1.25 million more jobs being created. We can deliver that, we have delivered that. So $100 billion going on infrastructure, but again it's $6 billion this year and $6 billion next year. Well there are projects that are underway. We've turned the, the sod on the uh, on the new uh, airport in Western Sydney. We've committed $1.4 billion to Snowy 2.0 to modernise the uh, the vision of Menzies and Chifley. Uh, we're obviously putting $5 billion into the airport rail link in Melbourne. These are projects that we are committed to. Uh, we're committed to busting the congestion out there in our cities. Your viewers um, today know that they can get to work sooner, they can get home earlier under our policies to bus congestion in the cities. Uh, taking you to something that hasn't been talked about much, mental health, there's provision set aside in this budget, what are you aiming to do? Well that's the most significant mental health and youth suicide uh, package ever released. What we want to do uh, is get more support to the people who need it most. So perinatal uh, support uh, obviously is important, early psychosis treatment, 30 new headspace centres working with Indigenous communities to get greater peer support for those people uh, who need it. Um, a lot of young people are very vulnerable and youth suicide is a national tragedy and so last night I spoke to those people, I spoke to their families and I said we hear you, we are with you. This is a bipartisan commitment, it's a national tragedy that needs to be addressed with both resources and effort. Well, some of the criticism you're getting though is on the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Money is being saved because it's been underspent. That helps to prop up your budget. What do you say to people who are criticising you about that? Well, we have fully funded the National Disability Insurance Scheme, Chris, and we will meet every cent of the Commonwealth commitment. This is a critical bipartisan policy. Um, this is again helping people who need our help. There are currently 250,000 people on the scheme, 78,000 of whom have not been on disability support before. It grows to 460,000. It's a scheme in transition. But as you say, it's a demand-driven program. So the money that wasn't spent there was not because people were on the program and weren't getting support. It was just that people are still moving into the program. All right, in four or five weeks' time, we'll be at the polls. And people might think, well, both sides are offering me tax cuts. What's the difference between you and Labor? Well, we're for lower taxes. We've legislated that, and tonight, last night we announced lower taxes. Bill Short 
Norton has a $200 billion plan for high taxes. It doesn't matter if you're putting money into your superannuation. It doesn't matter if you're going to work. It doesn't matter if you're running a small business. It doesn't matter if you're buying a property or buying a share um, or renting uh, your property. You will pay more under a shortened lead Labor government. They believe in higher taxes. They have higher taxes to chase higher spending. That never ends well. We want people to earn more and keep more of what they earn. Josh Frydenberg, thank you. Good to be with you.